Hey everyone, welcome to my channel and in this video, we'll solve few previous year problems from the chapter Newton's Laws of Motion that came in the advanced examination. So in this video, we'll take up three problems. So let's begin with the first problem. So this is problem number one and this question came in J Advanced 2021. So, so one end of a horizontally uniform beam of weight W and length L is hinged on a vertical wall and the other end is supported by a light inextensible rope, okay? The other end of the rope is fixed at a point Q, which is L above the hinge. A block of weight alpha W is uh, attached at the point P of the beam, as shown in the figure. The rope can sustain a maximum tension of 2 root 2 W. They're talking about this rope. Okay, so the T max over here is 2 root 2 times the weight of beam. Basically, we have to talk about the reaction force at this point O. Then we have to comment on the tension and then we have to comment on when the rope will break. So first, let's try to draw the FBD of the beam. At this point, let's say the, the vertical reaction force is FV and the horizontal reaction force is FH. And the weight of the beam is going to be W, so it'll, at this, so it'll act at the center of mass of the beam. And at this end point, the rope pulls the end of this beam with the force, let's say T, which is a tension in the rope. And this angle is going to be 45 degrees because, because if you calculate tan theta, it'll turn out to be one. And as a block is suspended by the at this end point, so the weight of the block will also act downwards. So the force here will be equal to the tension in this rope, but the tension in the rope is equal to alpha w. So we can just write that instead. So as now as this uh, beam is in equilibrium, we can write the force balance equation. So if I balance the horizontal forces, I can say the horizontal component of F of the reaction force is equals to the T cos 45, which will be T by root 2. And balancing the vertical components of the forces, we can say Fv equals. Now, now what we'll do is balance the torque about this point O. The moment of this force W is going to be, so I'm gonna take the clockwise torque as positive, let's say. So the moment of this force W will be W times its length from the axis, that is L by two. And the moment of this force is going to be alpha W, which is the force times the length from the axis, which is L. And this tension will have two components, right? One perpendicular to the rod and one along the rod. So this component has no contribution to the torque, whereas this, con this component has some contribution. So the perpendicular component is T by root two times the length from the axis will be L and this should all add up to zero. So from, so solving this further, we get the value of tension as this, okay? So now in this problem, it's given that the tension cannot exceed a maximum value of two root two w and as in the option d we have to talk about when the rope will break we can just so this tension that we just found out as a function of alpha it has to be less than 2 root 2 w for the ring to remain intact so after solving this we get alpha must be less than 3 by 2 for this rope to not break the option d is correct which says the rope will break if the alpha is greater than 1.5 and option c and for option C, if I set the value of alpha to be half, we get the value of tension to be root 2 W, which means option C is wrong. And in option B, they are saying the horizontal component of reaction force, which means they're talking about FH, is equal to W for alpha equals 0.5. So for alpha equals 0.5, we just found out the tension to be equal to root 2 W. So now if we substitute this value of tension into this equation, we'll get the horizontal component of the reaction force as W, which means option B is correct. In option A, they're saying the vertical component of the reaction force at O does not depend on alpha. For that, we have to substitute this value of tension that we have as a function of alpha into this equation. So let's try to do that. So the vertical component hence comes out to be one plus alpha times W. And after solving this, it the vertical component hence comes out to be independent of alpha. So option A is also correct. So the answer for this question is ABD. Okay. So now let's move on to the next problem. So this problem came in 1996. So we have a smooth semicircular wire track of radius r that is fixed in the vertical plane. One end of the massless spring of natural length 3r by 4 is attached to the lowest point O of the wire track. The small, a small ring of mass m which can slide on the track is attached to the other end of the spring. The ring is held stationary at point P. So it's held by an external force such that this makes an angle of 60 degrees with the vertical. So the spring constant is given. It is, so we have to consider, okay, so now the ring is now released. So at this particular instant, we have to draw the free body diagram of the ring and we need to determine the tangential acceleration of the ring and also the normal reaction on the ring. 
okay so let's try to draw the fbd of the small ring first of all its weight will act vertically downwards the spring makes an angle of 60 degrees with the vertical so if i join this point c to this point b as this is equal to the radius of the circle this is also equal to the radius of the circle and as this angle will be 60 degrees this is an equilateral triangle which means the length of this spring currently is r and it's given that the natural length of the spring is 3r by 4 which means the extension in this spring as of this moment is going to be r minus 3r by 4 which is r by 4. So as it is in the extended position the spring force will be in this direction and its magnitude will be equal to k times the extension. Okay so now if I if I join the center of this circle to the ring the normal reaction force will be in this direction and let's say its magnitude is some n. So now so the perpendicular direction to this normal will be the tangential direction. So this will be the FBD of the ring at this particular moment. In, in problem two, they are asking us about the tangential acceleration. So in order to find that, we need the tangential force. So there will be two components, right? So one component of this K delta X and one component of this MG involved. So now let's talk about the angles. So this complete angle that I'm drawing, drawing with green is going to be 60 degrees. And as from the triangle, the angle that the normal makes with the spring is 60 degrees, right? So this angle will also be 60 over here. So by angle sum property, we can say even this angle is 60 degrees. Okay, so now what is the component of mg along the tangent? So that will be mg sine 60. And the component of k delta x along the tangent will be k delta x sine 60. So the net tangential force is going to be mg sine 60, which is mg times root three by two plus k delta x sine 60. And k is given to be mg by r. Delta x we determined it to be with r by 4, sine 60 is root 3 by 2. So the net tangential force comes out to be root 3 mg divided by 8. And hence the tangential acceleration equals 5 root 3 g divided by 8. Now we have to determine the normal reaction. So from this diagram, we can say normal reaction. As instantaneously this ring does not gain any velocity, there won't be any centripetal acceleration, which means we can balance the force along this normal. So Balancing the forces along the normal direction, we can say n plus mg cos 60 equals k delta x, which is mg by 4 cos 60. So after solving this, we'll get the normal reaction as minus 3 mg divided by 8. So as the normal came out to be negative, it's opposite to the direction that we initially assumed it to be. And its magnitude will be 3 mg divided by 8. So that was the answer to this problem. So now let's move on to the next problem. So we have two cubes of mass m1 and m2 that are on two frictionless slopes on block A. And block A is given to be resting on a horizontal table. The cubes are connected by a string which passes over a pulley as shown in the figure. To what direction, to what horizontal acceleration F should the whole system, that is the blocks and the cubes included, be subjected so that the cubes do not slide down the plane? So what should be this acceleration so that, so that the cubes relative to this block A remains at rest? And we, in that particular condition, we have to also determine the tension in the string. Okay, so uh, as these cubes are given to not move relative to this block A, so the only acceleration that these blocks have will be F towards the right. Now let us say we take the frame of reference as this block A. So we are basically sitting over here and we are trying to observe these cubes. So first let's try to draw the FBD of cube M2. So its component of weight in this direction will be M2G sine beta. The component of weight in this direction will be M2G cos beta. And then there will be normal reaction by the surface of this block A. And as we, are sit as we took the frame of reference as the block A, we have to apply a pseudo force whose magnitude will be the mass of the block times the acceleration of the block A, which is F, and its direction will be opposite to the acceleration of the frame. And now, as we know, this block is mo not moving relative to the block A. This is now in equilibrium. So now we can balance the forces along the tangent and perpendicular to it. Oh yeah, and then there is also a tension force. So I'm I'm just going to write, write it with this. So there will be also a tension force, right? Now all we have to do is balance these forces. So we can say, so even this angle is going to be beta. So if we balance the forces along the tangent, we can say M2G sine beta and balancing the components in the vertical direction, we can say. So now, so this equation number two is of no use to us. Now let's do the same thing with block M1. FBD, if we balance the forces along the tangential direction, we can get T equals M1G sine alpha minus M1F cos alpha. Now as our goal was to determine this force F and the tension, we can use equation number one and this particular equation. So if I substitute the value of tension into equation number one, 
p get we'll get the acceleration of the block to be this particular value and now let's substitute it into this equation we get the tension force so that will be uh, on simplifying these uh, these two terms gets cancelled out and we're finally left with m1 m2 g sine alpha cos beta minus cos alpha sine beta will be cos of alpha plus beta divided by m1 cos alpha plus m2 so this is the final expression for tension and this is the horizontal acceleration of the block required so that was it for this video guys we'll take up more problems in the next videos and if you enjoyed the video please like and subscribe and thanks for watching